Hi everybody, welcome once again to the Lincoln Children's Zoo and our Virtual Keeper Corner segment. My name is Sarah and today we are going to be learning all about ball pythons. These guys are also sometimes called royal pythons. So with me today I have my friend Brutus. He is one of two ball pythons that live here at the zoo down in the hive. Uh, so besides Brutus, our other ball python, his name is Yoda. So those are the two ball pythons that you would be able to go ahead and meet here at the Lincoln Children's Zoo. So ball pythons, these guys are actually native to Western and Central Africa. Uh, so they are gonna be living a very terrestrial lifestyle, meaning they're going to be down on the ground. They're not necessarily gonna be way up in the tippy tops of the trees. Although they have found that some younger or juvenile ball pythons will sometimes be more adventurous going up into the tree canopy or higher up off the ground. But typically these guys are gonna be found down on the ground. Now, Brutus here is actually, well, ball pythons are the smallest of all of the African pythons. So he is roughly about three feet long. Um, so there are many other species of pythons that are native to Africa that can get much, much bigger. So being one of the smallest, uh, these guys are actually quite docile and they get the name ball python because he actually has the ability to curl up into a little itty bitty ball. So if a ball python feels threatened, they are actually gonna coil these big thick muscles all around their head to protect it and they'll actually make a little ball shape. So besides having these really thick muscles to make that ball shape, Ball pythons also have these really thick muscles because they are constrictors. So what that means is, is when he is gonna go after a prey item or get some food, he's gonna wrap his body around it and squeeze really, really tightly. Now, if you think about it, snakes don't have arms or legs or the ability to grab on to different things. So he has to just use his body to hold those prey items in place to make sure they don't run away while he's trying to eat dinner. Um, so even though he is going to use his body to see, you can see right here, he's wrapping around my wrist. He's not constricting me right now. Um, this is something that's pretty normal for them because if he was climbing over a log or a branch, he has to keep his balance. So he just doesn't want to fall down. So my arm is now his tree branch. He's going to go ahead and hold on. So some other really cool adaptations that ball pythons have is if you take a close look at his nose, you're gonna notice these little holes right on his upper lip. Those are called his heat seeking pits. So ball pythons have the ability to see or feel or sense the heat signature of the prey items that they are going to be eating. So pythons and snakes in general, they typically eat a lot of rodents like mice and rats. They're also maybe gonna eat um, some small birds. Uh, so when he is in the wild or ball pythons are looking for their food, they're looking for that heat signature uh, to go ahead and find their prey to be able to go ahead and eat it. Now, pythons, or the word python in general, people typically think when they hear that, automatically, oh, that must mean that that snake is venomous. So there is a difference between an animal being poisonous and being venomous. So if something is venomous, that means that it injects that substance into your bloodstream. It has to bite you. When something is poisonous, that means that we would have to eat it or consume it in order to go ahead and get sick. So there are a bunch of different little tricks or ways that people try to go ahead and say, oh, this means that it's, the snake is venomous. This means that this snake is non-venomous. Um, so if we take a look at Brutus here, you can see as a python, he has a more, ooh, sorry bud, he has a more triangle shaped head. So some people say, oh, if it has a triangle shaped head, it must be venomous. If it doesn't, then it must be non-venomous. Um, but Brutus here, he is actually non-venomous. So just because he has a triangle shaped head doesn't necessarily mean that that is true. So in all different parts of the world, there is not one universal rule that says if it's like this, it means it's this. If it's like this, it means it's that kind of thing. Um, so snakes can only be venomous or non-venomous. They cannot be poisonous. Um, 
But uh, in our case here, Brutus here, he's not gonna go ahead and inject me with any venom today. So you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> and if he was venomous, we wouldn't be holding him like this. Here at the zoos, we take a lot of safety precautions when working with potentially venomous animals. Uh, so being that he is non-venomous, that's why we're able to go ahead and hold him and take him out like this to go ahead and show you how cool ball pythons are. Um, so ball pythons uh, normally will probably live roughly about 20 to 25-ish years, um, but the oldest living ball python on record actually lived to be 47 years old. And even here at the Lincoln Children's Zoo, our other ball python, Yoda, he is 26 years old this year. So these guys can definitely have a very long life. Alrighty, so I think that's all I have for you guys for today. I hope you enjoyed getting to learn about ball pythons such as Brutus. Make sure you go ahead and check that comment section down below for your activity related to ball pythons.